prepare to delve into the depths of history where the origins of Christmas and the winter solstice intertwine, revealing a tapestry of esoteric symbolism and ancient traditions. Through this captivating exploration, we'll uncover the true essence of these celebrations, transcending their modern day interpretations and delving into their profound spiritual significance. Brace yourself for a journey of enlightenment as we unravel the enigmatic connections between these two seemingly diverse events, uncovering their shared connection to the cosmos, the human spirit, and the cyclical nature of life itself. Enlightenment. Delusional. Origins of Christmas predate Christianity through the pagan holiday called Saturnalia, which was a week long of lawlessness from December 17th through December 25th that honored Saturn, hence Saturnalia, and included human sacrifice, intoxication, naked caroling, and rape. During these seven days, there were no punishments for breaking any laws, according to Roman law. In the year 4 AD, Christianity adopted Saturnalia with the hopes that they could convert the pagans into Christianity by promising them that they could still celebrate Saturnalia as Christians. Imagine how that would work out today, right? Because Saturnalia did not follow Christian principles, the Christian leaders designated the last day of Saturnalia as the birth date of Jesus. Because of the pagan origins of Christmas, the Puritans banned this holiday, and between 1659 and 1681, Christmas was illegal in Massachusetts. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! In 1466, the Roman Catholic Church, under Pope Paul II, forced Jews to run through the city naked as a tribute to Saturnalia. According to author David Kurtzer in his book, The Vatican Role in the Rise of Modern Anti-Semitism, he stated, before they were to run, the Jews were richly fed, so as to make the race more difficult for them, and at the same time, more amusing for the spectators. And they did this while the Holy Father stood upon a richly ornamented balcony and laughed heartily. <laughs> Although I don't think his laugh sounded like that. It's important to note that in astrotheology, Saturn is Satan. The rings we give during wedding rituals represent the rings of Saturn. The word Saturday originates from the Old English word that means Saturn's day. Just as Sunday is the day of the sun, Monday is moon day, and Thursday is the day named after Thurston Howell from Gilligan's Island. Actually, it was named after the Norse god of thunder, Thor, hence Thor's day. Hey, I'm just kidding about Thurston Howell, you know? I am not amused. Okay, well, moving on. To this day, many people continue to unknowingly celebrate Saturnalia through their participation in debauchery and gluttony. Oftentimes, Christmas celebrations are commonly a day of excess in food and alcohol. Astonishingly, Saturn is depicted in Christian art in various churches, yet people don't seem to question why this distant planet is symbolized in churches and cathedrals on stained glass. For example, on the ceiling of St. Andrew's Church on Waterloo Street in East Sussex, there is a painting showing the sun surrounded by stars, a comet, and a crescent moon, and Saturn. Now keep in mind that in astrotheology, Saturn is Satan, so why would this representation be found in churches? The inner circle of 12 stars most likely represent the 12 apostles surrounding the sun, S-U-N slash S-O-N, 
which is another astrotheological reference to Jesus Christ being the Son of God. And once again, Sun Day, the day of the sun. The outer circle contains nine stars, the crescent eclipse of the moon, Saturn, and a comet that appears to perhaps be diving toward the sun. Now, could this be a solar event being prophesied through art? Perhaps. The nine stars plus Saturn may represent the ten planets in our solar system, if Nibiru is counted as one of those stars. The moon represents the Divine Feminine and the Virgin Mother. The Cologne Cathedral in Germany clearly shows Saturn on their stained glass window, and it was not placed there randomly. Hey mister, why don't you put some Saturn in that there picture? Each season is reflected by the tilt and spin of the Earth's axis, resulting with the sun being more prominent in the northern hemisphere for half the year and in the southern hemisphere for the other half. The winter solstice occurs in winter when the sun has reached its lowest elevation reflected with the fewest amount of daylight hours and the greatest amount of nighttime hours around December 21st and that's in the northern hemisphere. Our seasons are reflected by the amount of sun and darkness that we receive. During the autumn equinox, our daily sunlight is waning or decreasing, and at one point the day and night are equal in length. During the winter solstice, we have the shortest day of the year, December 21st or so. During the spring equinox, daily sunlight is waxing or increasing, and once again at one point the day and night are equal in length. And finally, we have the summer solstice, which gives us the longest day of the year. Now, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Will this day ever end? Or, yes, this day will last forever. Pagans and Christians alike celebrate their holidays on sacred astrological dates, and Christmas is no exception. This particular holiday has been celebrated for much longer by the ancients as one of the four great festivals that reflect each season through astrology and astronomy. Various mystery schools have also celebrated the change of season in association with the various astrological signs that fall on the spring and fall equinoxes as well as the summer and winter solstices. In an esoteric sense, the sun's cycle represents your soul's growth in consciousness along with the illumination of your soul and enlightenment. To envision this, imagine that spring is the birth of your soul. Once you have reached summer, your soul begins its descent from its spiritual home into incarnating to this planet. As days begin to get shorter, beginning on the summer solstice, the decrease in sunlight represents the veil of forgetfulness, where we do not remember why we came here or what our purpose is. As the days become longer, beginning on the winter solstice, your soul is released from its physical presence and makes its ascension back into its spiritual home with Source. That's it. I'm out of here. On the Wheel of Life, winter is the season of rest and represents preparation for renewed life, similar to how some animals go into hibernation. It's also known as the time of germination as spring brings the flowering of plant life that follows the maturation process into summer. Autumn gives us our crops along with new seeds and we return to winter to complete the full cycle and prepare for renewed life. The seasons teach us a lot about the process of birth, life, death, and rebirth. Alchemy provides us the saying, as above, so below. Think about this along the lines of how we came here and how we leave this vessel. After the sperm fertilizes the egg, we go through a maturation process that is identical to the exact number of days of both the maturation of corn from a seed along with the gestation period 
for a woman to give birth to a child. The child travels down the birth canal, the tunnel, and the child is brought from darkness to birth the light. As confirmed through near-death experiences, we follow the same process of going through a tunnel and following the light back to source. In a grander scheme, this cycle is repeated through seasons and our personal lives from birth to death, proving how life is simply a mere fractal of the universe, the cosmos, and ultimately of source. The winter solstice falls under the sign of Capricorn, which represents materialism and ego. In astrotheology, this is the time when Jesus, the sun, indulges in materialism, Capricorn, after leaving his father's home. It is also the time when Jesus, the sun, dies on the cross, where the sun remains on the southern cross constellation for three days, only to be reborn again as the days begin to get longer after this three-day period. What religion fails to teach us are the esoteric and occult meanings of the equinoxes and solstices. Adepts of mystery schools and practitioners of the occult sciences can also attest to the cosmic currents and life force of each season. While people argue over the ethnic sensitivity issues between saying Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, the truth dates back much further than its Christian beginnings. The intent of Christmas seems to be the overriding value of its true esoteric meaning or its pagan origin. A symbol or celebration is only as powerful as the intent behind it. While Christmas has become the biggest holiday that supports the corporate world, which in turn lobbies against our civil rights, it's also a time of giving and being with family. So enjoy that time with your family and don't overthink it. It's all about family. If no one told you this today, you are loved. You are appreciated. Thank you for your service to humanity. If you'd like to support my work, please join me on Patreon for as little as $1.11 a month. You can find that link below. Until the next time, I'm sending you all infinite love and light from my art to yours. Take care, everyone.